What's your best price? Go. Well, that's dog shit. And hey, I, I appreciate you. Um, what's your best price? What are we doing here? Is it is it is that our best deal or is it not our best deal? I don't get what I want, I keep what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you all listen to me because I'm on it. Okay. Really now listen, this is super important. In a seated position, everything's written. So when you're closing, you see this? This is your weapon. Everything that you want to say, you write. When I walk out of an office to close a deal, that paper is torn to pieces. Now I'm going to tell you how I tear it to pieces and I'm going to show you the strategy in which how I write stuff down. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, so number one, most people are concerned with payments. Most people aren't writing a check for the car. Now price may come up, right? Now does everybody understand a price objection sometimes is not a real price objection? It's like people are just probing for a better deal. Does that make sense? Hey, if you're gonna go buy a car, would you ask for a better deal? Yes. Why wouldn't you? Why, like, why wouldn't we ask for a better deal? Does that make sense? Now, because they ask for it, does that mean they're demanding a better deal or they're walking out? No, so don't treat it like that. You guys can't be scared. You guys gotta have something that when somebody says, uh, what's your best deal? Or can I get a better deal? Or what's your best price? A way you handle it, is that cool? Okay, so here we go. We got a Cadillac here and it's $99,000. How long have you been selling for? Just over a year. Come here. All right. So I got a Cadillac here, it's 99 grand. That's the price. If he wants to write, he can write. And now I'm gonna go over this with you. So you're gonna present this. Andy, great news. Got your new Cadillac ready to roll. 99 grand sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up. I say, what's your best price, go. Well, um, as far as that price, I was Okay, now I'm here, look at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So it's me and you, right? Hey, I appreciate you. By the way, what's your best price? I'm not too sure. Obviously, I have to go up to the manager and see what we can do, but do you see the value in everything that I presented to you so far today? Yeah, you did a good job. I just want to know what the price, what's okay. your best price? Okay. Obviously, there's a couple different things we have to get together before then. I can't just go in there and say, hey, what do we best got? Because you can shop around dealer, 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 and at the end of the day... Well, listen, I'm here in your office. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to buy your car. You said it's 99 grand, right? And I'm asking you, what's your best price? So as far as the 99 grand goes, what number can we agree on to earn your business today? 90 grand. So if I can do that, you drive it home right now? Sure. All right, let me go do to work for you. Just what I got. Well, that's dog shit. I'm not being negative. You don't want to say that, do you? Okay. Hey, listen to me. Go. You ready? Uh, Come on. Sure. Let's go. So we're already like we're right down here. My desk, yeah, right? we're all guys. Right I know we're sitting down. We're on a pencil. You okay. feel me? All right, ready? Hey, by the way, I'm going to teach you what to say. Is that cool? Hey, by the way, you don't like what you said, do you? No, because if you say, "Well, let me see what I can do," what would you pay? Ninety grand? I'll be right back. If I if you sent me out on a ninety nine grand pencil and I came back and I said, "Guy wants to pay ninety, you'd say, "Where'd you come up with that number?" And I'd say, "Well, I asked him what he wanted to give us for it." Why did you ask him that question? Why did you ask him? You don't ever ask people what they want to pay. Would that be stupid? That'd be like coming in saying, guys, great news. I got 14 grand for your trade-in. Let's do this. And they're like, oh, damn, it's not enough. And instead of you saying, well, hey, let me show you how we came up with top dollar for your trade-in. I said, well, what'd you want for it? Uh, 20,000. Let me go tell my manager you want 20 grand. I'll be right back. Then your manager goes, 20 grand? How, how did you get to 20 grand? You'd say, well, I asked him what he wanted for it. Well, why did you do that? Now I can't un take that back out of his mouth. Does that make sense? Never ask someone what they want to pay. 100% of the time, you will get an answer you do not like. 100% of the time. And once they say it, you can't pull it back out of their mouth. If you tell me you want to give me 90, now if I come back at 97, you're like, screw that, man. We're seven grand off. No, dude. We were never seven grand off. 99 was a good deal. But I, but I asked a stupid question that made him get, say something wrong to me. Everybody understand this. We're looking for blind spots right now. Problems inside the company that if we fix when we go back, they're no longer problems anymore. 
Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Cool. So, hey. So, this is out the door with tax, right? No trade in? Whatever. I don't care about all that. Sure yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't really care about all that. I just want to hear when I say what's your best price, what do you say? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why I'm not geeking out. I know this isn't what a pencil looks like. I'm just saying, hey, I, I appreciate you. Yeah, um, what's your best price? Alrighty, Mr. Andy Elliott. So, I got you the best price possible. I talked to my managers, haggle for you a little bit. We're looking at 99 out the door just for you. Where do you plan on taking it? What's your best price? That is gonna be my best price at the moment. I won't lose your business over a few hundred dollars. If I can help you out a little bit, I'll be more than glad to. Um, that is kind of the going market. So you're saying I can't get a better deal than that? If I was able, I might be able to crunch something. Okay, do you see the unsure, dollars. the uncertainty? Well, I might be able to out of the couple hundred, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like what are we doing here? Is, it, is, it, is that our best deal or is it not our best deal? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Hey, why the hell is everybody so scared of price? Guys, do we have to deal with this every time we sell somebody something? Everybody say, having a problem with the price is stupid. Okay, everybody, when I say, what's your best price, you repeat after me, you ready? Yes. Ready? I'm so glad you asked that. I'm so, so glad you asked that. that. Okay, now, now we're starting to sound like pros now, aren't we? Hey, what's your best price? So glad you asked that. So glad you asked that. Are we scared of it? Yeah. No. So we're going to look at them in the eye and we're gonna say, I'm so glad you asked that. What we do here at our company, we're a little bit different. It's the era of, tr of transparency. What we've learned is 99% of our customers want to get the best price up front. So what we've done is we've done a no haggle price policy system. We pay expensive tools and for accurate tools that price our vehicles for us. We don't even price them. They price our vehicles for us within a 500 mile radius. And then those tools, after pricing our vehicle, they also ensure that not only do you get the best price up front, but we don't play the cat and mouse game, which a lot of dealerships do. If we were to take this car and mark it up $3,000 and then turn around and bring it back down $3,000, even if you felt like you won, that wouldn't be trustworthy or respectful, would it? See, I'm looking for a further relationship than just today. I don't want to sell you just this car. I want to sell you every car you buy for the rest of your life. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, have I offended you in any way? Have I offended you in any way by giving you my best price up front? No. But Thank would goodness. I, but would I be able to get a better price? No. This right here in a 500 mile radius. Now listen, I, I want to ask you, where do you live at? Temecula. Okay, you wouldn't have made it in here if my car was overpriced. See, there's a thing called the internet now. And what we've learned is every single person that walks in here has one on their phone. Every single person now, they don't drive lot to lot, store to store and building to building like they did back in 1999. They look up what kind of vehicle they want, then they look up who has the best deal, then they look up reviews, and then they go into the company. And if they can find a car and it's in great condition and it's available, they'll buy it. Now I wanna tell you something, this price at $99,000, had you been sitting here six months ago, just rewind six months ago, you would have paid an additional $20,000 for this car. Why? Because you could land a 747 airplane on most car dealerships lots because they had no cars. But today, you're saving $20,000. There's never been a better time for you or any consumer to make a deal. So congratulations on making the best deal of your life and getting world-class customer service. And I promise you, I'll never let you down. I'm gonna make sure I get my personal cell phone number. And I apologize, forgot to ask you, when do you wanna set your first payment due? Towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, what's gonna work best for you and your family? Stop. Okay, now listen to me. When he asked me, I, I used 20 closes all in one. He asked me, what's your best price? I started out by saying, I'm so glad you asked that. Am I afraid of it? Am I scared? Am I nervous? No, I'm so glad you asked that. There's never been a better time in the history of the world for a consumer to make a deal on a vehicle. Why? Because 10 months ago, you'd have spent an additional $20,000 on this car. Why? Because you could land a 747 airplane on all the car dealerships lots because they had no inventory. Was that the truth? Yeah. Yep. So I don't know if you've ever won the lottery, but you just have. The fact that you're here today with me and I have this vehicle and it's only $99,000 and it's in phenomenal shape and you're not being overcharged, whether it's in the future or the past, it's a win-win for you. And by the way, 
we, it's the age of transparency. We always put our best price up front, okay? If there was a better price to give, we would have already given it online because that's the way we roll. We're a great dealership. We work online. 99% of our business is online business. So what we put on the internet is our best deal. And that's the way we've done business. And that's how we've stayed number one. So we're not a museum. We don't buy these to keep them. We buy them to sell them and we priced it right. When would you like your first payment due? Go back into it. Now listen, if you mumble, if you stutter, if you look like there's room, I want it. If you tell me there's an inch, I'm gonna run your ass a mile. Does that make sense? By the way, you can't tell me no like a dick either. Hey, is that your best price? Yeah, that's my best price. You're not getting a better deal. If you don't want my deal, then, ooh, ooh, dude, quit getting all angry and weird. Like you're gonna ruin this relationship like that. Hey, by the way, is somebody asking for a, a, a better deal disrespectful? No, it's not disrespectful, but, but like sometimes people like look at customers like they're being disrespectful when they ask for a better deal. Does that make sense? If you get that disgusted look on your face when somebody asks for a better deal, you better wipe that shit off your face, okay? He's okay to ask me for a better deal. It's how people operate. It's, listen, it's part of life. You're in sales. Get used to it. Matter of fact, I think every single person that walks in my office, and matter, hey, hey, you know what? I'm so confident, I'm gonna say this. Hey, as a matter of fact, I was actually gonna tell you about our pricing policy in just a second, so I'm glad that you asked me that, right? What did I say? I was actually about to tell you about our pricing policy anyways. Why? Because we're different than everybody else. We price our vehicles different than everybody else. We use a different structure. That's the reason why we're number one. You know what I'm saying? We're an, we're an internet online based store that prices their cars right. Now listen, when you go out there, you don't believe or you stutter or you seem squirmy or you seem weird, I'm out. Now I don't know about the rest of you in here, but who in here values their money? Raise your hand. Okay, when you ask somebody for a discount and they get weird, does that piss you off? Yep, when you ask somebody for a discount or you ask somebody, can you get a better deal? And you've been with them for one hour. And for one hour, you've got an opportunity to consciously pay attention to their state the entire time. And then all of a sudden, when you talk about money, they change, there's a problem in there. Am I right? Yeah. You know what I need you guys to do? Be machine-like. Be battle-tested. What does battle-tested mean? It means if you're the manager, I would page each of them up to the office and I would say, all right guys, 99 grand. Hey, can I get a better deal? Go. 99 grand is kind of the best deal. We use them. We use the Is it kinda? No, okay. Right, right. What's your best, what, what's your best deal? So 99 out the door is the best price. We use a perfect automated system. We check our area. We have the best pricing in the area. You know, we care about our customers. We don't just want to sell you one car. We want to sell you multiple cars. We want to build a relationship with you. So we are taking care of you, Mr. Andy Elliott. So let's get this. Yeah, but can right. I get a better deal though? Unfortunately, like I said, this is the best pricing we do. No, no, it's not unfortunately. It's fortunately for you. The fact that you're here at this day today in time with me having this vehicle, not unfortunately. Is there anything unfortunate about this deal or is it fortunate? fortunate? Listen, listen, you hear my words? Guys, follow me. Are your words your weapon? Okay, you wanna know how you be dangerous? Wordplay, wordplay, you gotta play with your words different. The fact that you're here, it's very fortunate. 10 months ago, you'd have paid 20 grand more, and two weeks from now, you might pay another 20 grand more. The fact that you're here today is your best time, if money's your biggest concern, to secure your best deal. Does that make sense? If money's your biggest concern, Mr. Customer, Mr. Customer, when you're asking me, can I get a better deal, what I hear you asking me is that money's a big concern to you. Would you agree? Okay, well, if money's a big concern to you, had you been here six months ago, you'd have paid an additional 20 grand because we wouldn't have had this car, and if we did, you'd have paid 20 more for it. There's never been a better time in history if money's a concern to you to sign on the dotted line and secure the best deal of your life. And if there's a trade involved, let them know. You're getting an additional 10 to 20% more for your trade anyways, plus securing a great deal on your car. Welcome to making a great deal, and it's haggle-free. Yes? So can I ask a hypothetical? So say, like, ask anything. You do those numbers. Mm -hmm. the best pricing. Then they hit you back with like, okay, well, I was at another dealership. And they sold the exact same car for 98 out the door. Brand new? Brand new. Yeah, is it brand new? Brand new. Okay, for, for a thousand less. A thousand less, yeah. Is that what you said? Yep. I can't speak for them. I don't know what's going on down there. You didn't go through the finance office, did you? No. 
Okay, there could be additional fees on the back. They could have charged you a higher interest rate. I have no idea. I can't speak for that place. I can only speak for me. But also, I want to ask you another question. You're going to service this car somewhere. Would you agree? You know what customers who've bought $100,000 plus cars have said? Purchasing the vehicle is one thing, but where they purchase it and where they can service it is a whole complete other thing. Where you buy your car, if they don't have the best service station in the country, which we have, I would tell you to think twice. And if it costs you an additional $1,000, I would tell you it would be worth it. So with that being said, if money's your biggest concern, obviously, if the 98,000 was a good deal and you would have loved it and something in your gut would have been like, I should do it, you'd have probably have bought it, am I right? But something inside of you made you feel like, hey, this isn't right, so you continue to shop, now you're here with me, and I'm reaching my hand out to say, hey, ask me this question. If you were out of town, sir, and your wife was stranded, broke down on the highway, and she had a flat tire, ask me if you called me and if I'd drop everything I'd do to go help her right now. Go ahead and ask me. Yes, I would. And if that's the kind of service that you're looking for, somebody will be with you from here today forward for the entire time they own it, plus help you with your service, then I'm the right person for you. And it's not about putting your price in your driveway. It's about putting the right car in the right customer service for the next five years you're going to own this vehicle. Wouldn't you agree? Well, that's me. Dude, don't get stuck on that shit. Watch. People hit you with an objection. Here's what they do. They put their hand out. You ever fed a little animal food? And then you go like this and they come eat out of your hand. Am I right? There's going to be times at the negotiation table where you're sitting there and the client's going to go, you know what you're going to do? <laughs> no thanks. And you're going to do that. And they're going to eat out of your hand. You know why? You're going to be ready. Don't fall for that. Shit. Hey, maybe it is a thousand less. Write the check. But what happens from today in the next five years or when you have a $100,000 car and you go to service it and that salesman don't care and it's only about money, you're going to realize you could have saved $10,000 and you, you shortcut it for $1,000. Do you like cheap stuff? I don't like cheap stuff, so why are we talking about cheap stuff? I don't know why they're 1000 less, but I promise you they're shaving that in some area. And you don't want an area that cuts corners and shaves deals. You want somebody that's going to give you a full customer service and that's us. I know a lot of dealerships that'll say, hey, we're better priced than them. And then after you buy it, and then you go and need help, they'll say, hey, we gave you the best price. We can't give you that. Okay, look, maybe we are a little more money, but also we're the highest in all the other areas that are important to you and your family after the sale and other companies aren't. So I don't know what your core values are, and I don't know what's important to you, but if after the sale is important to you, then you'll understand why we can afford to be a little bit more because we're higher in all the other areas. Does that make sense? That's it, guys. Listen, reasons and excuses. Just give them a reason. And by the way, do you got to believe in yourself when you say this? Okay. I, I want to, this is, this is like a perfect time to go over this with everybody. There's four types of salespeople and I want to talk about it right now because I'm a master closer. I'm not being arrogant, I'm not being cocky, I'm really good at closing, I can close everybody. And if I can't, I still believe I can, and I'm never gonna change it. And I study like hell, I'm not gonna change this, and it's buy or die. That's it. I'm a manager's favorite freaking dream, because I'll stay in there and I'll get every dollar. Okay, and, and, and by the way, so can you guys. But I wanna explain the four types of salespeople, because I want you to identify who you are at this time. Number one, you got an order taker, an order taker and a tour guide. What do they do? They just take orders all day long. Hey, what's going on? What are you here to see? Oh, red Honda Civic. That's it. What do you think? Uh, okay. Hey boss, he just came in to look at the red Honda, had 15 minutes. He's on his way. Gave him a business card. Dude, you're just burning, burning ups. That's an order taker and a tour guide. If that's you, if you don't know how to sell, you're screwed. Now then they're salespeople. This is the second type. Salespeople, they're good at selling. Like you're good at going out, showing the car, doing the walk around, but you can't close shit. You can't close nothing. 90% of the time, you're here, you're selling, okay? But once it comes to the close right here, you suck. Your manager goes in and closes all your deals. Anybody know anybody like that? They go in, they take the deal in, and then they, daddy, daddy. And they're screaming, daddy. And then you got to run in there and go close your deal every freaking time. Or it's like you send them in at a $6.99 a month and they come back at $2.99, signed commitment. You told me to get a signed commitment. It's like, come on, man. Shit. I knew I shouldn't have let you go in. 
Okay, there's order takers, tour guides, salespeople. They can sell, but they can't close. Okay, now they can't close the screen door. They suck. Now you got closers. Now, here's the important deal. If you go around, you tell people, oh, I'm a closer. Well, there's two types of closers. Closers that close for all the money, and then closers. If the price is 99,000, and you get a 98.5 commitment, you're a closer, or a 97K commitment. You're a closer, you closed it, good job, man. But you're not a master closer. You come off a penny, you go down to a closer. Master closers, they close the pencil, full boat. Okay, they can close anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere, on the phone, in person. They walk in, in 30 seconds into the conversation, you'll notice people are sitting across the table from each other, they'll walk in, they'll slide around to the side. Does that make sense? Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, hey, uh, what's your name again? Dave. Dave, I gotta say it 10 times. Hey Dave, what's going on? Andy Elliott, how you doing? Nice to meet Good. you, sir. Yeah, so I want to go over this information with you, and I know you're probably going to interrupt me and ask me some questions. Would it be okay if I slide next to you just go over? Absolutely. Okay, what am I doing? I'm getting here. Why? He, he, he can't tell me no right here. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments Tell me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. See this? See this? He can tell me no pretty easy. I don't like that. Right here, hey, what's going on, Mark? Right here, there's some information I wanna go over with you. Obviously, you're probably gonna have a question. You're gonna to wanna to interrupt me and say, hey, what about this or that? Would it be okay if I slid over here to went over this with you? You have any questions? Absolutely. I go over. What did I do? Got permission, earned the right. I slid in here. Now I'm gonna close his ass right here. Knee to knee, knee to knee. You can do that in California. Here. You, well, you can do this anywhere, but you gotta, you gotta ask. I asked for permission. Would it be okay to come around that side of the table so I can go over this with you because you're probably gonna have some questions when I ask me and I wanna make sure I explain it to you thoroughly. Would that be okay? They say, yeah, get around there. Why? Because when you're next to them, it makes it very hard for them to say no to you. Does that make sense? It's called the tactical advantage, okay? So when I go in now, and I'm next to him, what is my goal? Close it for all the money. You guys feel me? Hey guys, I just wanna tell you, you're the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.